Johannesburg's iconic Charlotte Matoke Academic Hospital serves as a training facility for future doctors and is home to some of the country's top specialists. Its importance to healthcare in the province can't be exaggerated. Nor can the impact of a catastrophic fire that gutted part of the hospital in April last year. Now a leaked report on the fire reveals some troubling details. Here's Bongani. Frequent fires, a decade of malfeasance, an assassination of a whistleblower. Is Gauteng Health a crime scene where perpetrators easily walk free? Health activist Mark Haywood has spent a decade exposing the dark side of this 57 billion rand department. There's a mafia that's operating, a politically connected criminal mafia is exploiting this healthcare system and its vulnerability to theft. Fires ignite, documents are lost. In 2018, a fire burnt scores of records of the life Esidimeni tragedy in which 141 psychiatric patients died. The blaze also claimed the lives of three city firemen inside the Bank of Lisbon building where Gauteng Health kept its records. Four years later and still the reports on what happened have not been released, despite promises to do so by the provincial government. From 2020, Gauteng Health officials spent billions on irregular PPE contracts and half a billion rand on this place, a now abandoned COVID hospital on Johannesburg's West Rand. Where was the thinking? You're putting up a hospital for COVID 100 kilometers from the rest of where the population is staying. Professor Adam Mohammed is head of internal medicine at Charlotte Maitlake Johannesburg Academic Hospital. He remembers doctors battling to get basic medical supplies. I went to that hospital. Most of the doctors said, no, please stop what you're doing. Let's cut our losses and move out and not continue. It continued. Then in February 2021, Carltonville Hospital storeroom was set alight and 20 million rands of stock was destroyed. But the Carltonville fire was just a curtain raiser. On the 16th of April 2021, the storeroom at Johannesburg's Charlotte Maitlake Hospital became yet another crime scene. There was chaos and black smoke everywhere. The heat was so intense, an entire floor collapsed. It was so searing, the visors of the firefighters were melting. And as the fire raged, Professor Mohammed was on the front lines. It was a nightmare. Got to the hospital in absolute chaos. We moved over 900 patients in under 36 hours out of that hospital. It was sad how we treated those patients like cattle, but in a panic situation, we did what we needed to do. Then this year, a second fire. Three fires within months couldn't be coincidence. Then Mark leaked this police forensic report into the fire at Charlotte Maitlake, completed more than a year ago it found the first inferno was arson. Some people cynically set a hospital alight, knowing that we were in the middle of a life-threatening pandemic. Shocking and crude and horrible and hard to imagine as that, but that is the truth. Before the fire, the hospital was treating 150,000 outpatients a year. Overnight, wards were shut down and medical services suspended. Jennifer had aggressive breast cancer. She was one of thousands relying on Charlotte McClague for treatment. After a delay, she was sent to Chris Hani Baragwanath in Soweto. And you went to Barra? It was chaos. There were just queues and queues and queues and queues and queues of patients. 
So many patients needed help. Afraid of reprisals, Jennifer only wants us to use her first name. She says she wasn't just fighting the cancer, she was fighting Houting Health to get treatment. The first chemo itself was actually done down the passageway in plastic chairs with like everybody sharing one drip stand. But I suppose they managed to treat the patients that way. The hospital was damaged extensively and it needed the Gauteng government to move quickly. But it didn't. The first 12 months was lies, lies, lies. We're going to get the hospital fixed. Nothing happened, no matter all the meetings. When you say that there have been lies, is it about a lack of a plan? I think for me, lies is you come and tell me you got a plan, we're appointing tenders, yet you haven't allocated a budget. When setting out on this story, we were determined to get an official response. So we asked the new MEC for Gauteng Health and Wellness, Noman Dungomo Ralihoko. But she has refused to discuss the fire with us and referred us to the Premier's office, who wouldn't entertain our questions either. The Gauteng Department of Infrastructure was meant to be responsible for the repairs. The Premier issued a special proclamation to take that responsibility away from the Infrastructure Department to the Health Department in Gauteng. But the Health Department didn't have the capacity, so the Health Department asked the South African Development Bank to take responsibility in the national government. I mean, it's a, a story of our time in some ways, tragically. Tragedy of errors. You would say a comedy of errors, but it's a tragedy of errors because people have died. With inflammatory breast cancer, treatment has to be frequent. Tato Munchu was about to start radiation for aggressive breast cancer when the fire happened. During the delay, her cancer returned. Now she's become a cancer educator. I um, tried to ask them to book me. They still say, no, the hospital is closed, it can't open. Premier say, no, it's opening next week. No, no, the president is visiting the hospital. No, it's ready to open. Tado has endured two long years of chemo. We'd hoped to interview her, but she cancelled at the last minute, saying she was simply too sick to speak. I would not be surprised if a lot more people have died in the aftermath of the fire than died in the life Esidemeni uh, case. By December 2021, Professor Mohammed was so frustrated by the delays, he wrote an open letter to the president. We actually took a step. Sorry, we want to come back, even if the building is going to fall on us, but we needed to save patients, and that's what we did. But that selflessness came at a price. Thousands of parking bays were destroyed, and as construction lagged, cars were stolen, and doctors and nurses taking the long walk to work were sometimes mugged. And yet, 40 million rand is spent on security here. We have ongoing theft in our hospital. We have a second security company appointed. We have not tied up all the loose ends. We're still bleeding when copper piping, electrical piping is being stolen and pipes were stolen that was being used by patients for oxygen. And astonishingly, there have been seven fires at Gauteng hospitals, including the two at Charlotte McLeague. Who burns down a hospital? And if indeed it was arson, wouldn't you want to throw the book at whoever was responsible? Doctors have told carte blanche they couldn't get supplies, yet a stock take at the time lists a huge inventory. The report also finds contradictory evidence from witnesses, yet the investigation has gone cold, and it was Mark himself who had to give the Premier's office a copy of the forensic report. The Gauteng Health Department claimed not to have had that report. So if they are to be believed, the SAPS sat with this report for a year and a couple of months, passed it on to nobody, didn't ask internally why no investigation was going on. And the Premier and the Minister of Health told lies because they told the country that it was being actively investigated and it was a priority to get to the bottom of what was going on. Clearly it wasn't. No. 
Perhaps that is why the new MEC and the new Premier refuse to speak to us. How can anyone explain this travesty? All the while doctors still battle massive patient backlogs in Gauteng. And it's surely far easier reviving a rubber doll and doing media junkets than urgently fixing destruction wrought by arsonists. Gauteng Health is clearly ablaze. Can we put the fire out? We could if there was a will. The rot is very, very deep. It needs to be somebody who's willing to cut the cancer right out of the system. If you're not willing to do that, then we can't save it. Or do we just accept that criminals who set fire to hospitals can burn them down and simply walk away? Thank you for watching our stories here online and please subscribe below to become part of our YouTube community and be notified when we upload our latest content.